look, anybody that's running into people issues, you're not talking to enough people. And, and you're never, and, and when you said, oh, I thought I hired the perfect person, I just want to tell you, you're never going to hire the perfect person. Nobody's going to take a job. Just everyone that's on here, write this down. And this includes me. Nobody's going to take a job working for us. That's the perfect person. Because if they are, they're already busy doing something else. The whole purpose of this show is to engage with business owners and be able to answer questions for people that will give them some insight and perspective on how to grow and scale a business. Not only leadership, but real life examples. This is the golden moment. I would do business with you right now. Hello. There they are. Wow, look at that. All right, a little technical difficulties we, in the studio. We needed to be host at our own party. Our own it's party. a funny thing, this virtual world we're living in these days. When you throw a party or have a call like this, you still have to be made the host. It's not just automatically happening. Doesn't. I thought it just happened. I it, thought magic just happened. Magic does not happen. But right, you know everybody. what is magical? You. So you are magical. All right, Brandon Dawson here. Introduce ourselves. And Natalie Dawson. We are excited to have you join us for this episode of 10X Owners Live. This episode, it's like a real it's live a, thing. Well, it's like our 110th show. It's we've done a lot of shows, but this is real live. Like we can see all of you. Gary, we see you. I think you're taking notes. Tom, we see you. Precision Landscape, also known as Pat, we see you. Michael, this is a very live show. As you can tell, sometimes we have technical difficulties, uh, but this is Brandon Dawson. And I would love to have him share why he's a business scaling expert with all of you. Yeah. So, you know, what we love about business is uh, doing it the easy way, not the hard way. Mm. Uh, what we have been teaching thousands of business owners uh, to do, which is exactly what I've done and what we do using the same principles that we've created that I follow that helped me sell my last business for $151 million, or 77 times EBITDA, a business that was self-funded, no debt, no capital raised, because I do not believe that you need debt or you need capital but it doesn't mean you shouldn't use debt at the right time once you know what you're doing to acquire somebody else. So I'm okay with that. But, but if you've got to build a business needing money before the business can take care of itself, generally speaking and statistically, those businesses don't succeed. So here's a couple of interesting stats if this is your first time with us. 31 and a half million small to mid-sized businesses under $100 million in size, two thirds fail every five years, 97% fail every 10. 97% of fail. all businesses over 10 years fail. But you can fail, but not be a quitter, right? There might be people, how many of you guys put yes in the chat if you've ever had a business fail? Drop I'd a yes. Put, I'd put yes I'd, in the yeah, chat Yeah, i put right yes. Now. Right. Yes. That's yes. Right. I see. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you guys can can have a not well performing business and it can fail. But yeah, you business just because a business. But by the way, to what Natalie's saying, just because a business fails doesn't mean you fail. You know, I lost eight million dollars in one business that I shut down one day. I walked in and told Natalie, "Go, go fire fifty percent of the employees, and I'm going to keep the other fifty percent on for the next twelve months to wind down our commitments." but we're going to shut this business down. Now that's a hard choice, you know, that's, but, but see my expertise is in building businesses. And when you can see something can't be built for the long term, there's no point in doing it the hard way. And, and so, so the business failed, I shut it down, but I didn't fail mm. because I went on to make something a lot bigger and more valuable. So the thing that I love that we've been doing here since Natalie and I partnered with Grant and Elena Cardone, it'll almost be three years now. It is three years. Be, oh, it is three years. Well, I don't know when we count the official date. We should probably set a date. Incorporation, business incorporation. Well, that was June 1st. I know. So, but we, but we partnered in March. It's so, been about three years. So, so look, at the end of the day, we built a business in 36 months doing exactly what we've taught over 1,200 business owners doing. Uh huh. Can we tell them about our milestone that we hit today? This is all leads into your story. So yeah, we've been in business it. now for almost three years. We're like on that borderline again, semantics. But today, ladies and gentlemen, you are the, he was the first person to know. I was the actually first person. He was second. You guys are the now third person to know that we have officially at Cardo Ventures after three years of business hit our 100th employee Mark. Yes. Meaning we have like a stabilized 
100 team members here in Cardinal Ventures. Now we've hired many, many more. Yeah, than but to get 100 remarkable team members, we've had to hire 150, 160, and we've interviewed 2000. Yes. So one of the things we talk about in the scaling process of growing your business is how to find, attract, align, develop, and retain great people. You actually have to be good at five things to have a remarkable employee, not one. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you aren't going to get lucky and you're not just going to randomly find somebody. Uh, you can go look for people and find them, but you're not going to randomly find them. And you're probably never going to hire the person you need at the moment that you're desperate enough that you need to hire that person right now, mm -hmm. because you tend to statistically business owners tend to grab whatever, whoever, or whatever looks or sounds the best mm -hmm. to fill the need they have at that moment. And because most business owners statistically, again, I just go to the facts. 98.3% of all of those 31 and a half million businesses have less than 12 employees. 25 million have one, the owner. So, you know, 25 million out of 31 and a half, they don't know anything about hiring people because mm -hmm. they're still working by themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think what's really important is that you fundamentally understand the facts and the facts and the statistics. Data will never lie to you. Mm. Statistics can depending on who twisted them, but raw data won't lie to you. So, so this is the important thing. Put yes. If this is your first night with us, just put yes. Oh yes. We'd love to welcome you. Yes. If there's any first nighters, oh there we gosh. go. Cody, Tom, nice, Christian, nice, Joshua. Nice. Look at that. Well, wow. A lot okay, of first timers. Lee, welcome to your Gary. first 10 X owners live. We started this show when, when COVID hit, uh -huh. Most of our events were live events and, and all of a sudden we had to come off the road. So we set up, look at all these yeses. This is amazing. Guys, we love to welcome. See new people. And we don't just share these numbers with you to brag. Like we, we are, I haven't even started bragging yet. Right, no, we haven't even started, but the hundred, the hundred employee mark, like, why is that important as a listener for you to know? Well, in three years, if you could have your business go from a dead stop, meaning zero revenue to three years later, having a hundred stabilized team members and have the revenue numbers that we have, like you would think that we're more legit in the advice that we're giving you. And we can also then say, hey, we can help you do the same thing because unlike a lot of people out there, we're not just giving business advice as consultants and only have two or three employees by, behind the scenes. We have a army of team members that is growing like crazy. So we're in the thick of it. We're in the weeds with you growing and scaling. And we really understand what that's like, not in past businesses, not from past experience, although we have that as well, but we are with you in 2022, building a business with the same employee challenges you have with the same Facebook ad spend going up and all of the iOS changes. By like the way, the I looked at how much you spent. You I went mean, on a buying spree in January and February with those Facebook ads. You're actually incorrect. I would like to correct you on this, but um, that's our total marketing expense, oh, not our okay. direct ad spend. Right. So I didn't go, checking. but I have actually kind of gone on sure a buying. you're paying attention to the numbers. Oh, I'm, I'm paying all the attention. So anyway, it's very exciting for us to have you on this call with us because again, we are in the thick of it with building a business alongside you. Yeah. So, so look, if this is your first time. I'm sorry, we're speaking so fast. Uh, we're excited. We're this excited is the best night everybody. of the week. We love Tuesday nights. This is family uh, so nights. So one of the things we teach in, in, in People Essentials, and Natalie put this remarkable book out called Teamwork. Mm -hmm. We talk about the five things you must do to have a remarkable employee engagement. Those five things someone asked, if I could repeat them, is to find, you got to find talent. It's not going to come to you. You've got to be able to attract it when you find it. You got to be able to give them a compelling reason to care, to want to talk to you. Then you have to align that talent with your business, because if you don't align them with your business, you're not keeping them anyway. Mm -mm. And then you got to develop them because any business that's growing, it's people need to grow. No one can come in with the skill set they have and maintain that skill set. If you're serious about growing the business, you got to have a plan to grow your team. And then the fifth and hardest thing to do is retain great people. You can't. You can't lose them. And, and so since this is your first time here, then maybe you haven't heard our break points and all these things. So we've done research on 4,000 businesses to understand at what point do they break? At what point do they succeed? What things do they need to have in place? When do they need to be in place? And we've reverse engineered that. And we created uh, over the last 15 years, I've created a platform and automated it to work with business owners 
on growing their business. And for example, and like Natalie said, we're not bragging about this, but I have certain rules in business. And if you come to our programs, you learn what those rules are. But I do suggest that when you're taking guidance or advice from any single person, you have to learn to ask good questions. So my best three questions that I teach people to ask is question number one, when somebody's giving you advice, when they're giving you guidance, when they're espousing, is that a word, a spewing, espousing? What is it when they tell you without you asking? Sounds smart regardless. Whatever it is, uh, when they're giving you their opinion, mm. I always say, use these filters. Question number one, what's the most amount of money you've ever made in a year? Because if the person talking to you has not made more money than you're trying to make, you'd have no business listening to them. Second question is, what's the biggest thing they've ever built? And, and, then, and then quantified by revenues, employees, and profitability. Because those are data points. If you're a business owner and you want to build something big, and you're talking to somebody that hasn't built something that you're trying to build, you should not be listening to them. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is, what's the biggest thing you've ever exited? Because if somebody hasn't completed a cycle of exiting something, now that exit could be their business got sold and they got a golden parachute and, and they were paid out. And, and so then you're like, wow, then you were important to the company. Exiting a business isn't just getting fired or leaving with nothing. So the reason I bring this up is, is I have found is there more bad advice out there than there is good advice. So mm -hmm. if you ask those three questions and you perfect them, then if somebody answers them the right way and you're like, that makes sense to me because that person under that person's done it, then you should ask them the questions. No one has asked, but I'm going to tell you, we started this business 36 months ago on the same principles we teach every single day. And we did two and a half million in the first six months of revenue, 14 and a half million in the first year. We just finished last year. We did over 40 million. And this year we'll do $75 million. And we've spun off three new businesses from this entity that when you combine them all, will be between 75 and 100 million this year. So that was done without raising a single penny. That was done without Grant Cardone or myself. We put zero money in the business. And that was done with no debt. So if you want to learn from people who are experts in building businesses without the requirement of other people's money, funding with a ton of money, and raising money, if you want to learn from people who, who are willing to teach you, that's what this is about. And, and you get to hear from some of our people that are on here because many of them that, that come on this show have been experiencing working with us and at different levels have seen unbelievable success very quickly. And so that's what this show is about. And, and tonight's show is how I took $30,000 and turned it into tens of millions of dollars. Wouldn't you like to take $30,000 and turn it into tens of millions? It doesn't that sound nice. Like everybody in your homes and your cars, we see you all be like, Ooh, it is with our team all the time. Yeah. Ooh. So here's, so how did we do it? How did we do it? What we did is, uh, we did not know Grant Cardone. We did not know Elena Cardone. In fact, I had just read his books for about three or four months. We were Nat fans. Natalie, how many of you guys are, are fans? was a fan. I was not a fan. I, you I became saw a, a YouTube fan. channel. She showed me one YouTube and I stopped one YouTube. You showed me one, one of YouTube. his videos. That's what you used to call it. One YouTube. Yeah, I had no social one media. Video. I had no social media. You saw one video on a platform called YouTube. Hey, 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 with the money gun, money gun. Brandon could not stand Grant Cardone for probably about a month. I liked Grant after about a couple of days. The cycle was a lot shorter with me than it was. I couldn't stand him at first and you couldn't stand him for a very long time, but we couldn't stand Grant initially. We couldn't see past. It's funny because even in the studio, we have this. Now we love him for this. We have this beautiful painting of Grant and he's sitting on a chair made out of cash. That's actually on Smoking fire. a cigar. He's lighting it with $100 bills. 
the idea, you know, Grant does what he needs to do in order to get people's attention. And that's Grant's job is to get so big and so well known that people, some people hate him. And if you get an opportunity to spend time in proximity with his content and his events, most people end up loving him because he has a good purpose and he is on a mission and we are on a similar mission. But at first, well, it we wasn't, didn't know, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And you don't know one. if it's real. So for some of you that this is your first night watching us, you're like, who are these two talking? How do we know if they're real or not they're throwing around some big numbers mm -hmm. i would just encourage you to check it out mm -hmm. so so look so we decided to do that so um after watching a few she made YouTubes, me listen to the he, he she saw made some me listen YouTubes, to the, the, she made me listen he to saw the, some instagrams what, what was that we had to listen to was that the, the 10x rule it's called an audio book oh, audio book that's what so she made me listen to an For those audio of you who book. are new we are married so this is you know we're just kind of poking fun at each other so she's like you're gonna listen to this we had a car ride and i said i don't want to listen to this i can't stand that guy He's she so says cranky. you're gonna listen to this i said, i don't want to listen to it my 16 year old is in the back seat anyway I, we're about 10 minutes into the book and i started laughing and i was I said, like you oh, know we're what? listening i go you know what this guy knows what he's talking about the one thing when you know what you're talking about and somebody else is talking to you you know if they know what they're talking about mm -hmm. when you don't know and they sound good is when you get in trouble mm -hmm. so i knew he knew so we listened to that audiobook i listened to it about 10 times i'm like this guy knows what he's talking about then i went on and listened to sell or be sold to be obsessed to be, be obsessed with the average i'm like man the the rhythm the theme the 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 points he's hitting so we bought tickets for thirty thousand dollars get this we went on the website we registered for growth con which is going to be next weekend growth con stands for growth conference so it's a big conference that the cardone enterprise team puts on that is all about growth and they put different speakers together but that's what we refer to it as growth con but it's called growth conference so so we bought $30,000. I went online and I just put my credit card in and I purchased them and we never talked to one person. We wanted to go see, is this the real deal? Is what we're thinking and, and, and hearing, is it fit for what we want to do? And, and so we went to that conference, a very dear friend of mine and Natalie's was speaking. Was that the first day? Yes, it was. Yeah. Was speaking on the first day and so we had told them we're going to be there. So we went to dinner the night afterwards and, and, or that night, and we were all just blown away. And that dear friend of mine was Dr. John Maxwell. And so he, he, he was like, man, I cannot believe how many people were there. And, and, and we just went to meet people. Besides Didn't, John, who besides was a John, speaker, we knew nobody, nobody, not one person, not one, nobody. And, and we, we got met, on our networking pants and shirts and we were like, okay, we're going right. to do this. She made me business cards the day before we rolled in there, had my picture on it. He was my so name. uncomfortable. He was like, look, I had my business rah, rah. for 15 years. It sold. I was <laughs> no longer, I couldn't hide under the, under the name of my business. All of a sudden I went from being the oddity guy. And before that I was the Sonus guy uh -huh. to nobody. Brandon Dawson. I was a nobody. Like nobody knew me. Okay. Anyway. And, and, and we rolled into that place. Well, I tell him because I thought the business cards were stupid. She, he thought I was they like, were so well, stupid. this is dumb. I don't need. These. I thought they were fabulous. Thank God. Somebody thought they were fabulous. You need a good thinker on your team. No I, I will promise you that And I've got a remarkable thinker on the team. Otherwise I probably would have blown some opportunities, but I spent $30,000 so we could sit in the front row and we could go and we could see what's going on. We could meet all the people and, and I will promise you within the first half of the first day, we were just mind blown, not just because of the, how well the show was produced and the quality of the speakers, even by the first half of day, but by meeting all the 10 X community people. I honestly, if there's one moment in my life that I could relive, it would be that whole thing. Yeah, me too. It'd be the whole, the whole first day first three days that entire experience if i could redo it because you don't know what you don't know and for us i can only speak for for you and i before meeting all of you and before becoming a part of this like seemingly crazy 10x movement uh it, life was just very isolating if i'm honest we didn't have a lot of friends who were really supportive of us and we really struggled because we always thought that it was us we always thought that oh maybe people don't like us for I don't know, a variety of reasons. We didn't really, we didn't really know. Like, and I think it's hard for people to, to see that today because we're surrounded by like all oh, this 10 X mentality and we have now a hundred employees and, and there's so many incredible people in this community. But three years ago, we really struggled to find people who were on the same page as us. Well, because most, most, most all new. my mentors, look, I've, I've got, I've been so blessed. 
and and same with I've known you forever and same with you. Lucky My you. mentors are all 25, 30 years older than mm -hmm. me. So, you know, it was cool when I was 28 or 30 and they were like 55 and 60, but it ain't cool now because I'm 50, I'm going on 54 and they're like 80, 85. It's still so cool. no, they're cool. Yeah. But the point is, is that like, they're not, they're not like trying to go drive and build a business now. They're on the other side of that cycle. Yeah. You know, they're all, they're all independently wealthy and retired. Most of them aren't working anymore. And we started, when I sold my business, that's who we started hanging out with. Mm -hmm. And after like a year and a half of hanging out with people that just wanted to worry about golfing or wh which island they were going to go to, or what, you know, like, like, like we love them to death, but that was not the cycle we wanted to be in. I still wanted to build. She wanted to build. And yet we are finding ourselves being attracted to the community that we had become so attached to of people that were more wanting to sunset or retire or mm -hmm. get more homes. And so we started playing that game, buying multiple homes and doing all sorts of crazy stuff, but we were not happy. No. And it wasn't until we went to growth con where we looked at each other and we we're like, this is home. Like now all we need to do is somehow get Grant Cardone to learn who we are. Now, fortunately, John Maxwell insert pulled, the business card. Don't give John Maxwell. Well, you give, one you give, us, you give too pulled. much credit. You give too much credit to the John Maxwell thing and not enough credit for these business cards. Oh, you, and you know, see, it. This, see, you see the face. It, see? This is the face. This see, is the now face all of a sudden, he's lying. All of a sudden now you guys are getting us cards. in like full force right now. Brandon hasn't eaten in 48 hours. I'm so on a he's, fast. He's a little uh, edgy and I'm, you know, poking the bear a little bit. Anyway, where were we in the story? Oh, the isolating. We were, we were very isolated prior to joining this community. And then we found, we, we stumbled upon GrowthCon. It was the greatest investment that we've ever made that $30,000. We thought we were nuts for first investing $30,000 in these tickets. And when we showed up within the first two hours, it was home. And again, if, it, if I could relive one moment in my entire life, it would be that event because it was so life-changing to be able to meet many of you, but to be a part of something that was something that I had always dreamed of, but didn't actually know it, it really existed. And so at this growth conference, this cool business card thing happened. Well, so we go around, we meet everybody. We finally meet Grant, Elena. We introduce ourselves. Barely. And, like, And I just take a picture, but, but since I do teach a program, called 10 X pitch. It's the way I got 151 million for my company. 77 yeah, times it. EBITDA. I'm an expert in pitching. I've pitched thousands of deals. You got me. So and, I have to and say, I, pitched I her, can't, so, I can't you knock know, the pitch judge skills. me by the quality of the people I surround myself with. So, so, so look, I uh, stepped in to take a picture with Grant and I said, Hey, uh, Grant, it's a wonderful meeting you. Uh, I've been working on something for the last 30 years that could add an extra couple billion to my name and yours. If you had 15 minutes to look at it. Plus, based on the people I've met here, I can tell it really helped them. And we complimented each other. And Grant said, anything with billions, I'd be willing to look at it. So being ready for those conversations is important. Most people are not ready for those conversations. Now, the business card thing is funny because I gave him my card and we kind of ran into each other over the course of the three days, but then we left and we went home. And all of a sudden we're watching Instagram and I start my, I had 200 followers, by the way. All of a sudden I get 8,000 followers and I'm getting all this activity and I have no idea. He thought his phone was blowing I up. thought something happened on my phone like, because the alerts All the notifications is going And nuts. I said, Natalie, I don't know what's happening here. Is this normal? Because I didn't, I didn't use social media. And she was like, no, look at this post. And there was a post of Grant Cardone holding my business card going, this is my new buddy, Brandon. Everyone Holding needs the business. You, you said business card. Holding, bus holding the business card. The business card with the picture. This is my buddy, Brandon, my new buddy. Everyone needs to meet him. And, 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 and my Instagram blew up. That was the, I think that's the first real follower I ever got was when he did that posting. Everyone else was family and friends. So, so, you know, at the end of the day, um, that changed our lives. And the reason we're bringing it up right now is because I've been talking about this for, for years, but collaboration is a new currency. Anybody trying to do anything on their own, it is the hardest way to succeed. And growing a business, starting a business, growing a business, scaling a business, and then eventually exiting a business, practicing and doing that is not necessarily the best way to do it. I promise you. And, and so, um, so, so the idea here is, is that, that this was my expertise. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to start a business that could help people like you figure out how to grow faster without making all the mistakes that I made in my first and second and third business. Um, and, and really felt like I needed to, 
to show my results by selling my last business. And now with the results we have with this business, helping 1,200 business owners crush it. We, we manage Cardinal Ventures, 100 employees, and we just also went over the billion dollar mark where we manage over a billion dollars of businesses. So imagine Crazy. you were three years old. We have 100 employees in less than 36, actually 33 months from our first revenue. And, and, and this year, we'll end the year with over 200 employees. So cool. So with that, the reason we are bringing up GrowthCon, one, for those of you who are going, we want to prep you like this business card thing, as much as we joke about it, like, how are you prepping yourself for this event? Can you put yes in the chat? If you are going to be attending the growth conference next week. Oh, look at all these people. Yeah. How exciting for any of you who do not have tickets yet. Or any of you who have team members that should be a part of this experience, I'm telling you, this is the most life changing event I have ever experienced it experienced. I was not somebody who was part of the event. I was a participant and this, this whole experience entirely changed my life. So what's amazing is right now we are offering virtual tickets for $97. It's ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. So team members, family members, maybe you need to get somebody on the same page with you. That's like not into this whole 10 X thing. It is going to be an incredible show. We have not launched or announced a single speaker and the minds are going to be blown. You're not going to want to miss any moment of this. You can also, once you buy the 97, you can watch it live, which I absolutely recommend you do. Uh, but you can also have the access to the recording, That's which right. previously was a $200 value. And now we're just giving it with the $97 ticket. Also, we have some sales team members in the chat. We have a handful of tickets. We're not supposed to talk about these tickets, but we do have a handful of tickets. Well, I know, I know. So, so, so here's the thing for in person. Yeah. We're not supposed to be talking about this because we don't want to put a run on the house, but because Cardone Ventures has so many remarkable clients, it just so happens we have a couple set of clients who just had babies. So there are four we call them Cardo Ventures babies. Yeah, they're Cardo Ventures babies because they and, happen after they started working with us. Yes. And while they're and still probably at an event, the the conception. So Is that what that's called? Inception, conception. Yeah, I don't know. Contraception, uh, yeah. something like that. Inception, conception, whatever. That whole thing. So, so, so here's the thing. Uh, before we call Grant's offices and say, hey, we have some diamond tickets available. We also have- There's like two. There's two diamond tickets and I think there's four executives or there's four VIPs. Yep. So if, if you're even remotely interested before we call them tomorrow and say, hey, these tickets are going to be open. Mm -hmm. If you guys snag them tonight, they will not be put back. So so it, it's it's an unbelievable opportunity because they've been sold out now for, a, for over a month, but- Totally give our team a call. These tickets, like everywhere else, we are entirely sold out. And it is just because of, you know, circumstance that a handful of people have had to give back their tickets. And so we have them, if you're interested in going in person, handful of tickets, virtual, the beautiful thing about virtual is there are unlimited amount of tickets there. And so we highly recommend that you guys uh, sign up anybody, again, team members, significant others, family members, people that you want to get on this 10 X train with you. Or if you, you or yourself, you're like, I'm not really sure about all of this. I'm not sure you guys are real. I would still recommend coming in person. We are very real, but the virtual option. Yeah. Look, I, I think I, I would throw, I, I'm just going to tell you this, um, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if you're serious about blowing it up in business, I would, I would, if you have an office party or something you could do with your team, if you're going to the event, you pay the $97, have your team watch it together. There, there's going to be, uh, we're intricately involved in this because, um, let's get the screen back up for virtual. So that yeah, they let's, can so they can the shoot QR that barcode. Code. Yeah. We're involved in this more than we've ever been because obviously I'm a speaker, but I'm also engineering some of the things that we're talking about there's going to be so many announcements and and data points at this event this this I, I am certain that after this year this thing's just gonna like it's already been you know 12,000 14,000 15,000 people 35,000 people I told Grant based on what's going to happen this year there's a good chance we might need to be pulling down the uh, the stadium in Arizona here <laughs> it holds eighty five thousand. Let's go. Let's go. Let's let. There's enough stuff going on in the world 
that there's an old saying and it's control the controllable. So the only way to help everyone else in the world is to help yourself first. If you're incapable of taking care of yourself, your family, your friends, your employees, your customers, your vendors, you're not going to be able to help anybody else. So let's, let's focus on what we can control and let's blow this thing up. And, and the best way to do that is you need to bring people along with you. So they could use a little rest from the news. Buy them this virtual link for $97. And if you have kids and loved ones and you want them to be inspired to do something bigger, do something more impactful, gift them a virtual. Like totally. just get them involved. That's all I can tell you. It happened for us. If we had not gone to that. Oh my car- gosh. We used to fight about the stupidest. I'm sorry. I'm the stupidest shit. I'm telling you the stuff. Cause we didn't have clarity there. We didn't understand what we were actually trying to create and between Grant and Elena, and there are so many other incredible speakers, but just the two of them talking about what it means to get on the same page to have a shared mission, to support each other. That entirely changed the trajectory of our lives, just that alone, much less all of the other marketing, sales, speaking, uh, uh, business operations topics that were covered, but just that alone changed everything for us. So if you are not currently going to this virtual or you need somebody, you should absolutely get on this. The link, I know we put the QR code, but the link is grantcardone.com forward slash virtual. So you can also grab those tickets there. We want to bring up some people. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's, uh, why don't we grab some people here and bring them up? Let's see. Was there somebody from last week that we missed? I can't remember. Maybe not. All right. If we missed you last week, let us know. So, uh, let's see. You got to have your camera on though. Wiley. Is that right? Wiley. I think so. All right. Let's, let's do, uh, let's see. Carolina or flames. Those are the only two open. Uh, Colleen's open. She's frozen. Where's, oh, there she oh, is. That, yeah. So let's bring on uh, Carolina. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? So great. good. So great to hear you every week. Very uplifting. Thanks good. for doing this. So, okay. Um, now that Brandon spoke today about starting his business without capital or loans. Um, I had never thought about that. And I, I also started mine without capital or loan. So that, that made me feel really good. Um, anyway, I've been struggling with hiring my first employee. Um, I thought I had the perfect person a few weeks ago. And uh, we spoke, we interviewed. Um, by the way, I used all the tools that Natalie talks about in her book. Um, we were apparently, she was apparently very motivated, very engaged and, and willing to do to, to the leap. And then she called me and backed up. And the same thing happened with the second, second person that I had found. And, you know, we, we had a coffee on Saturday. He called me yesterday and said, you know what? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I asked both and they say the, the common answer was, oh, I'm, I'm afraid to lose my stability. I have health insurance, vision, dental, life insurance, blah, blah, blah. And they both mentioned that. So I'm finding it, I'm finding it that people really, really are into stability, you know, uh, despite the fact that I'm offering very good commission, you know, um, commission um, compensation. Um, and even doing the math, I'm like, listen, you would be earning much more than you are now in, with commission than, you know, with your payment structure. So it's a bit frustrating. Um, I guess my question would be, should I change my offer? Should I? No, you need to talk to more people. Look, anybody that's running into people issues, you're not talking to enough people. And, and you're never, and, and when you say, oh, I thought I hired the perfect person, I just want to tell you, you're never going to hire the perfect person. Nobody's going to take a job. Just everyone that's on here, write this down. This includes me. Nobody's going to take a job working for us. That's the perfect person. Because if they are, they're already busy doing something else. So what we need to do is we need to fire, we, fire. We need to hire people, hire for attitude, train for results. So you're talking to people who are comfortable. Just by nature, think about what they said to you. They're comfortable. They're not going to do, they're not going to stretch themselves. 
They're not going to push themselves to, to, to cold call or to go out and meet clients or whatever you need them to do. But if you guys are looking for people to help you build your business and people who want to be comfortable, they ain't the people going to help you build your business. You need to hire people like you. You need to hire crazy people. Crazy people. I also have this philosophy that I learned from Grant around sales for customers for recruiting. You in the interview process are either selling or you are being sold. Sometimes the applicant is remarkable and the position that you have and the vision that you have, like you don't do the right job selling. And I think early on, like guys, I had never recruited a single person prior to recruiting our first 50 team members at Cardone Ventures, like never once, never had that experience, didn't know what to say. So when you reference the things that I talk about in my book, it's from painful mistakes that I was making two and a half years ago when we started our real recruitment efforts here. When it comes to- I have always recruited my people. But that, that's because I started recruiting because I recognized in my first iteration, I'm never going to hire somebody to fix my problems. But like recruited people on like an Indeed platform? Well, no, that's that's getting somebody's resume. I'm well, talking yeah. recruiting, true recruiting. So, right. What like, I'm talking like you're, about you're is like- You're looking at resumes. Recruiting is like going in the street, meeting people and getting them to come work for you. Kind of like, kind of like. Kind of like some of our team members that are on here tonight that are sweating because you just said kind of, fire. Kind of, kind of like, kind of like all of listen, those team like members going to clubhouse and listening. We have to our them. brand new team member. It's her first day today. And I'm sure she's like, oh my gosh, hi. Yeah. We're not firing anyone. Don't worry. So, so, so the thing is, is like Aaron. I recruited Aaron. Yeah, but so, so no, I'm okay. just telling. When you're a business owner and you're in business for, you're Wait. not going to answer all the Indeed postings. You're going to have to go find people. But can we go back to the seller them. be sold? What are we talking about right now? You interrupted me when I was telling. Kevin you I interrupted me. You, you you did what you did at home. You cut me off. That's not true. But continue, continue. I'd like to hear about all of your recruiting. Experience. Yeah, I'm just saying though, you can't. You're not going to go and answer. You're not going to get in the, enough resumes from Indeed when you're working by yourself. You don't have the time to sort through them all. So you fight, you start getting one or two things and you start chasing the one or two things. The advantage Natalie has is she has a recruiting team and they look at how many resumes do you guys look at this year? Thousand? More than that. Two thousand, three thousand resumes. So, so I would like to point out this recruiting team. We hired our second recruiter a month ago. It has been two people, myself and Gabrielle. Yeah, she's being defensive because she's trying to show everybody how good she is. She's well, um, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. I was, I was talking about something. My point. Oh my gosh, get to the point. Let's the point is, I'm ready. Natalie's job is to go out and find people and make sure they're operationalized into the company. When uh -huh. you're a business owner working by yourself, everything's your job. Uh -huh. So, so for you, if you're going to recruit somebody, you got to go find somebody, somebody with a great attitude, somebody who wants to win, somebody who's excited about being coached, interviewing people that are answering resumes that are comparing you to comfortable jobs and 401ks when you work by yourself, it's not congruent. So you got to go find those people. Now go ahead. Babe. You did an excellent job. That was my point. Like she's not going to get a resume in and go, Oh, I'm going to go. This is like a perfect person. Like you're going to get, look, when you, the hardest part, when you're working by yourself is grinding to find those people that are willing to come help you. And you got to go recruit them. Where would you recommend going to recruit them? I use the natural environment. So, mm -hmm. so I, I, when I like the president of my company that when I sold it, he's now has made $14 million. I stopped by the automotive dealership, the Ferrari dealership on the way to pick my daughter up from school. I'd stop by all the car dealerships and I would meet the kids that would come out and greet me. And I'd see who had good communication skills, who would look me in the eye, who could try to sell me something. And if I did and met somebody, I would then use that and try to recruit them. And that's exactly what happened. He asked me if I wanted to go for a ride in the car, I had no interest in, but he asked me. So I said, sure. And about halfway in the ride, I'm like, What's your big goals? What are your ambitions? What are they teaching you to do? He would say, I'm just graduating college, making 85,000 part-time. I said, well, what's your big ambition? He said, one day I want to run this Ferrari dealership. I go, well, that's disappointing. He goes, what do you mean it's disappointing? I said, I thought I, I met a lot of people. You're a pretty high quality person. I thought you'd want to own one of these Ferrari dealerships one time. Mm. And he's like, oh, I don't come for money. And I said, well, if someone's willing to show you how to make enough money, you could own a dealership. Would you want to work with that person? And I recruited him. He was my first employee. And I recruited eight employees after that. Recruiting is different than interviewing and hiring off a resume. When you're in business by yourself, for yourself, you're going to have to promote where you're going, 
the kind of people you want to do it with, what's in it for them to help you, what they need to do to contribute. You got to promote, 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 and let that person gravitate to you. Can I say one more? Yeah, piece go on for this? it. Okay. You say whatever you want, babe. What, I didn't mean what, to cut you off. Yeah, thank you. Um, what I was talking about to, with the seller be sold thing, when you said you took the person out to coffee, I just want to put this in context. Uh, you don't have time to take enough, the volume of candidates that you need to be looking at, at out to coffee. Like we've never taken a team member out to coffee in the recruitment process because we're focused on if, if that process works, which I am confident it does because it's how we recruit people. And I know we have a lot of people in the chat who have used it as well. There should be so many people that in the seller be sold thing. If I was a, if I was a high performer, I might not actually think that you taking me out to coffee is a good thing. And all of a sudden I am in a position where you're kind of selling me because you're taking me out to coffee versus, Hey, like this is the opportunity of a lifetime. It's going to go to somebody who thinks it's the opportunity of a lifetime and sees it and gets to be on the ground floor. And so I would actually remove the coffee piece and keep it. It doesn't have to be transactional, but keep it in the traditional process because you will find great people just through that process. So I would, I would rethink that a little and, bit. And what Natalie's saying is true. You take someone to coffee on the first meeting, they think they got you. Now totally. they're in the driver's seat. For sure. You want to do this right stack. If you are going to use resumes and you're going to use postings, set 10 or 12 or 15 interviews up, make them sit in the waiting room a half hour longer before you interview them and let them see how many people are coming through. Mm -hmm. Because the most important thing you have to send a message is that you get to pick who you want to work with. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be an honor to get to work with you. Totally. And if you're sitting there begging people to go to work for you, then you're already in trouble because they're selling you you're being sold. Mm -hmm. And when someone comes, oh, I want benefits. I want this. You should have already known before you ever followed up with them that that was more important than having an opportunity to succeed. Mm -hmm. So, so, so either do it in volume or go out and find somebody, tell them, be excited about what you're doing, the kind of person you're looking for. When you're ordering the coffee, talk to the barista. When you're in some line, talk to people about what you're doing and the kind of people you're looking for and watch who you attract to you. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Scooter. Scooter, how you doing, buddy? Scooter is doing sc Scooter Scotty. I heard a win from you today in our all team meeting. Let's Scooter hear it. Scotty let's hear it. Let's hear is it. doing great right now. We are. We are. Thank you for uh, calling on me. And I just wanted to comment. Yes, we are having a lot of wins right now. Uh, Kate is our, is helping us on our 360 platform. She's a rock star. Everybody we've met. But in any case, I wanted to say that, you know, in August, I attended at People Essentials. And I was just telling Kate this when I was telling her about this. When I, even though I've been to a 10X 360, and even though I'm platforming now, you know, the benefits of the platforming, I haven't even experienced yet. Everything that's come as far as our growth, I believe, has come from the People Essentials that I attended. Because that's where I've met the four key people that are helping me really build my business right now. I've learned these things that you talked about, attract, align, develop, and uh, retain. And I've got the team pretty much on alignment right now. And our growth has been phenomenal. And I just wanted to thank you. And, you know, I was thinking that our tremendous success was due to the platforming process, but I don't even get my book until June. So what I'm really excited about is what's going to happen after that, because I know my growth is going to continue between now and then. And it's just... You know, I, I appreciate you guys. Congratulations on 100 employees. Um, I do have one question. Every time I ask a question, it relates to the same thing. And that is trying to get to that $500 in revenue per employee, right? And I'm struggling right now because I do have a couple of people that I feel are a little bit out of alignment. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull them into alignment. And I'm struggling between the balance of getting wide so I have replacements trained and ready if I decide that they have to be ejected, you know, they're going to eject themselves from the company and having somebody else ready to go to fill that seat so that I don't slow down my growth. So I'll listen now. Thank you. Go for it. Um, look, it's a process. It's a process. You're, you, you know, you're, you're never going to time it perfectly one way or the other. Lean into your assets. Be good to your people. Try to develop them get some front runners, model, mimic, and master what they're doing, have them help you with the rest and, and curate people through the system. Um, there's never, it's, it's never going to be a start stop. We've never, 
we've never lost somebody that we that we counted on where it's been opportunistic for us. So so when you lose people and you're in the middle of stuff, it's not opportunistic. Uh, it's not the most opportunistic time, but it creates an opportunity mm. to replace them. So it becomes opportunistic because I always say, whenever we hire someone that we lost, we're going to hire better people than we lost. And people are like, oh, how could you say that? Well, it's not because of the people. It's because our experience, our own, if we're paying attention, we're going to ask better questions. We're going to have better expectations. We're going to have higher expectations. We're going to be, we're going to do a better job of onboarding them to hold them accountable to, to winning. So, so, so the thing is, when you have that culture, people are going to come and people are going to go, but the machine has to allow people to succeed. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The more experience you have with this, the more you develop this sixth sense. And, uh, I've done this with hundreds and hundreds of team members to where today within the first week or two, I know if somebody is going to be a fit with us or if they're not, and I call it and nobody else sees it. The department head probably doesn't see it. Most of the time they don't. And then, you know, two weeks later, we'll get their resignation or there'll be some performance issue. Like you can just, you can start to read how engaged somebody is. If you're doing all of those things that we talk about in people essentials and really setting them up properly. And to Brandon's point, you know, sometimes people join your environment and then you change what you're doing and you're having all this growth and they realize, oh, this thing isn't for me. We don't hold that against anybody, but as he's talking about, you know, we become better. Okay. Then we start to really know what better questions to ask. We recently just had a couple of people transition out of our environment and they went on to do things that weren't what they were doing here. And for us, we think that's a really good thing. We're happy about that. I am maniacal when it comes to our resource planning. Like this is a conversation that comes up weekly. I just had a conversation this morning about, I look, and when I say resource planning, it's like, I look at our existing team. I have temp checks on all hundred of them. And I base our recruitment efforts around where these team members are at, which ones would be the most painful if somebody were to leave tomorrow for whatever reason, them choosing it or us choosing. I base what we're recruiting off of my temp check on these different team members. And I'm training our department heads to be paying attention to this too, but we don't always invest in having a backfill for somebody just for the sake of having a backfill. And we balance this with our financials. And so our EVP of finance and I are meeting regularly to look at those things so that we never drop below our targeted threshold, which is what Brandon has said is our waterline. Um, 500,000 in revenue per head. So Natalie already knows how many people based on our plan for 2022, she knows exactly how many people she's going to be hiring and I know which, which ones are going to be the most painful for us as we grow. So specifically with you, as you're growing right now, you can start to see, oh my gosh, if my business is taking off, what are the positions that are going to be most impacted with this growth? I'm prioritizing the hires based on those. I'm still looking at other candidates and I'm looking at other positions to be backfilled or in addition to, but you really have to attach it to what is the primary problem that I'm going to be experiencing either with growth or with a lack of growth or the team member transitioning out that makes me need to feel confident in my, my plan B and my plan C. And, you know, you get better with volume. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're trying to manage one employee or two, your perspective is skewed when you're yeah. managing hundreds and interviewing thousands, you start to expand your intuition about the kind of people that are going to work out. And so, you know, all I got to tell you is when you're small, the hardest part of business is being small. It's true. It's just the hardest part. All right, Jay, we're going to bring Jay Thank on. You. Thank you. Jay, how are you, man? Jay. Hey, what's going on? How y'all doing? Look good, at good. you look so nice. What, with wait, your were you, at a, were you doing a deal today did, or what? Did you dress up for owner's yeah, I life? I, I, well, I, I should say yes, because I haven't seen you guys in so long and I wanted to dress up. But no, I, I was on, I've been on like, I'm in the oil and gas business, as you know, and as oil and gas prices go crazy, man, they, they call and I'm, I had to go. Yeah, this is your season. Ago, I to, this uh, this yeah, is your season. And huh? I know. I've been on like <laughs> and, three, and in the walnut, in the walnut a, a day. when I used to pick walnuts up, they'd call this year a bumper crop. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, man. It's exactly what we're having right now. A, a what a crop? A what crop? Bumper. Bumper crop. It's just bumper. big. We're, yeah. we're, we're having a bumper crop in the um, in the old business right now. Absolutely. Hey, yes, no, I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Um, my, my question is, 
I, I wrote down a couple of questions. I'm trying to learn about questions. And I'm trying to think, okay, so what's the best one here? What's the one thing I, I need to look forward to and learn from and go after at GrowthCon? It's kind of like, what, so I'm going to go. Am I just going to be there and just kind of, I'm taking six people. So, I mean, I've got, I, this isn't my first time. But when I was going last time, I, I was kind of confused about exactly what do I need to be, what, what's my purpose here, man? When I, mm. I sat up all night, and I was listening to Cardone's, you know, the, the motivational stuff and, and, and I was real, I was real pumped up, but is there one thing that you think that I should be looking for? I've asked Grant the question, but I, I you know, this know is a great, you, this is, a, this is a great question, but uh, didn't we actually do a podcast on this? No, I think it was owners live last year that we did this whole prep. Actually, if you stalk my Instagram, I back in March of last year, you'd have to go way back, but I do this whole video around like five different things to do before growth con for me. The one thing that out of all of that, that I would absolutely recommend is have every single person have specific targets. So is it the target for how many contacts created? Is it the three contacts that you already know who are going to be there from a retention standpoint? Is it, you know, you want to reconnect with people that you've already met through the 10X community? Like what is the target? And once you're clear on how many people you want them to meet, how many deals they could potentially do, and then you have to follow up every single day. So I would have a group text with all six of those people. And so at the end of the day, you're checking, Hey, did you get your 35 contacts today, like new people that you met, new conversations that you had. Oh no, mm. I'm only at 25. Okay, great. You're not going to bed until like, we're here for a purpose. We're not just here to soak it all in and be just kind of particles floating around. It's like, I have a target. I need to meet people. I need to connect with people. I have to go out of my way in order to get uncomfortable. The other thing is I, right. would, I would ask everybody in your group text for each speaker to identify the three most important things they took from that speaker. Mm -hmm. Because if you have four or five, six people there, that's 18 different pieces of data mm -hmm. that you wow. can have with your team. And if for those that are on virtual, I would do the same thing. I'd ask my team, I'd even incentivize them. Hey, anybody that watches all three days and gives me the top three to five things from each speaker that we could actually apply into the business, and keep it unique so that if you have more employees, they're all different ideas. And then the trick is, if you have 10 employees and they all give you three to five ideas for each speaker, so 10 people, three ideas, that's 30 ideas that they gleaned that could help your business from one speaker. Then what you do is you prioritize those ideas from the most common down to the, the, the most uh, unique. And then you pick the top three to five common ones and you go attack those and the team feels like they were part of helping create that. So Yep. I would also have them make a presentation to get your investment out of it. If you're spending energy and resources and, and, and real money to have them there, right. like, okay, right. on Friday, I want a presentation of these things. So it's not just loose. Like you're really enforcing that they need to learn and be taking this seriously and they can share it with the other team members. So if they're presenting, then it was kind of like the other team members were there and learning. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I like that. Hey, I like that a lot. You're Looking right. forward hey, so to Brandon, seeing you there, buddy. Cool. Yeah, thanks. Can I ask one more question? Then I'll just get sure. off and you can. Yeah. What, what is the one thing what, what is the one thing you would have changed earlier in your career if if you could go back? I know you probably would answer that 400 times on podcast, whatever. What, what is the uh, one thing me, you would have changed earlier in your career if, if, you could have, if you could? Yeah, so for me, when I was starting to do unbelievably well when I was 27 and 28, breaking through all the glass ceilings and being told no hundred times and then winning, um, it, it would have been increasing my intellectual awareness and intellectual curiosity and not leaning into my in intellectual ignorance and intellectual arrogance. I finally had formulated this belief that no matter what anybody told me, if I was determined to do it, I would break through it. And then I stopped asking my mentors good questions. And it's only in reflection that you know if a moment was a catalyst in your life. I've left a quarter of a billion dollars off the table of, of money I created because I didn't ask my investors that I should have been going to the right questions. So I was making decisions that impacted me and them because I just felt like my intuition, I knew what was best. And so I would have really worked on enhancing because I was a great listener until I had limited amount of success by sure will. And then I just decided that it was going to be determination that, that got me there. I would have, yeah. I would have increased my sensitivity to my mentors 
and ask better questions, even when I felt like things were going perfect. Right, right. So good. And I mean, I, we ran into that same challenge um, in our, earlier in our career. So I, I feel you there. And I look forward awesome, to seeing you guys. Buddy. Thank look you forward so to seeing much. you Thanks too. Forward to Jay. All right. So we're going to bring Thank on, you. let's see who else we got here. Let's, we have uh, to bring back on Cooper and Flames okay. has had his hand up. Okay. All right. We also need to. Oh, okay. Cooper, are you there? Can, can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yes, that's great, hello. dude. Great internet. Hello. Sweet, sweet. Um, yeah, so like, like I was talking, um, I just bought into a franchise. We just had our grand opening on uh, the 5th of March, sold out. Um, and I have, a, I have a vision, a goal for myself in 10 years. I want to open 20 of these things in the Midwest. Um, if there's like one piece of advice, brand new analogy, um, what would be my next step to, to open my next one? Um, well, uh, the next step to opening the next one is perfecting the first one. So most people go wide and thin. So they have a lot of, a lot of locations, very little profitability. Before you go wide and open your next one and don't open the next one, you're, I'm going to tell, I'm forbidding you from opening a second one until you can open two more because that forces you to get the cash reserves in place. It forces you to hesitate a little bit on moving a little too quick because it's easy to open a second one, but it's usually the second one that kills you. So, so doing, getting the first one where you're hitting your targets, you understand cause and effect, you know what makes the business work. You've developed a leadership team that when your attention is no longer there, the business continues to work. And you know what that looks like is that's called scale, maximizing what you have. And the way you test that is say you grinding, you're working with your team, then you force you and your family to go take a couple months off in vacation in the second and third year. And if the business still works when you're on vacation, you can go open your second and third one. If you can't take a vacation because you have to be at that first one, mm. you have no business opening the second and third one. No business. No business. Thanks for what being kind of, what, here, Cooper. Oh, yeah. What kind of muted. franchise, Cooper? Somebody mute, they cut you off before you even got a chance to answer. Yeah. What kind of franchise? It's a uh, it's called Mahana Fresh. It's a build your own bowl, gluten free uh, menu. Nice. Ooh. Well, yeah. get that thing rocking and rolling. Maybe we have to open one up here in Scottsdale, Arizona. You can't hide all the good restaurants in the Midwest. For sure. <laughs> awesome. All right, brother. Good to see you. <laughs> Bye, Cooper. Okay, so flames. How you doing, buddy? Flames' virtual hand is up, and his physical hand yeah. has been up for like forty-five yeah, he's minutes. A good dude. Yeah, I know he is. We go oh, way yeah. back. <laughs> it's good to see you. Appreciate it for picking on me. Um, so I'll see you at GrowthCon, and I got the Ooh. pitch pro too as well. So um, I wanted nice. to see, like, what – because I'm looking to collaborate with, like, the big boys and, like, club owners and things like that with my clothing brand. So I'm trying to look, like, what would be the most beneficial, like, segments to really take away and, like, really dial into – that I can get from the pitch program. So you're talking about my pitch program? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, what did you get? The eight videos? Is that what you got? Or did you get the 10X pitch? The um the 10X pitch. Yeah. So you know what you need to do is craft your story, but 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 here's the thing. You're a good dude, and I can remember every time I sat and talked to you, but you're a little quiet. Okay. So you're you, you know, you're an artist, dude. And so put some of your art on. So it grab, grabs attention. And then when people go, hey, hey, that's awesome. That's, that's cool. Talk to them. Like connect with them. Tell them what you do. Be excited. Get your pitch down. Hey, you know, here's who I am. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what I love. Here's how it impacts people. But remember, if your name's on everything, then people won't necessarily associate with that. So you got to figure out a way. You got to say, like, I collaborate with people. So I have my brand on it. But if there's some custom programs, something custom, I'm, I, I would do it because the thing is a lot of people don't want to put somebody else's brand on them, right? That's the problem when you're a young aspiring artist until you made it is that like people want to, people don't necessarily want to wear a third party's brand. Mm -hmm. So I would tell you, you need to find a way to integrate with people. Take the artwork you do and the beautiful stuff work that you do in your clothing lines and figure out a way to integrate people into it. So they feel like they're a part of that too. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's get good. your pitch down and remember your best pitches are the are when you're asking good questions i see you got a good book in your hand too that's right yep i was gonna say me and the team we got this so 
We're going to dial in. Awesome. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to see you, brother. I'll sign it at GrowthCon if yeah, you bring there you go. it. For Can we sure. just bring Michael on? One last one, and then we'll get into Oh, this. my Come goodness. got to bring Michael. Yes, of course we can. Hey, buddy. How are you, Michael? Hi, Michael. Hey, what's up, guys? Long time no see. Hey, no kitty. Uh, see where you. have you been? Man, I have been busy growing this damn business. That's where Good. I've been. Good for you. We like um, that. Hey, I want to share something that's a big win. Um hmm. I was talking to Dr. G last week after 10X Owners Live. I bought a diamond ticket, guys. I want to share something. Everybody, not everyone, a lot of people know that I won Grant's pitch off last year. He invested $10,000 into my business. If I wouldn't have gone to Grant Cardone's growth con, not only would that have not have happened, but I also wouldn't have made $300,000 working part-time on this business last year. Boom. So if you're on the fence about this, guys, I cannot tell you enough, buy the damn virtual, invest the 2,500, mm. do whatever it takes, have Dr. G call you and drop 10 stacks on a diamond ticket. Cause I promise you, I couldn't have done that last year. So oh. you know what, just, I got you, so man. much love for you guys and I can't wait to be there with you. It's like family. It's like, huh? homecoming and i'm just excited to be there guys Uh, awesome can't wait to see you and 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 these are the stories we love you know when people it's similar to our story it's just different right i bought those tickets to go check it out he he earned those tickets to because he worked last year busting his ass learning new things doing new things in order to be able to pay for those tickets so it doesn't matter how you get the tickets the point is are you there and if you can't be there we have a virtual opportunity for you as well so now, I, I, I'd be remiss in telling you something else. So I'm just going to mention it to you because I know I got some lifers on here. Um, we also have two masterminds happening um, right after GrowthCon. Which we haven't done. When was the last time we did a tropical mastermind? Has it been a year? And we have never done two in a row. So Grant wanted to do an East Coast mastermind. Grant's and crazy. West Coast. Grant is nuts. I know he is. This and Bahamas so- one had three tickets left as of like three somebody, weeks ago somebody again somebody couldn't make it last minute so it opened up a couple bahamas tickets yeah so grant had already planned this bahamas mastermind for the first weekend in or the second weekend in april and then because there was so much demand for this and they they sold out all but three tickets three weeks ago he's like we got to get another mastermind going people want the mastermind so in three weeks later we're going to Cabo for a Cabo mastermind. So an East or West, if Cabo is on your bucket list, you should join us in Cabo. If Bahamas is on your mat or on your bucket list, you should join. Yeah, us because here's what, so this live show, uh, we only have one more live show and then we're at growth con. So the reason we'll have I, more live shows after that, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about the point is, is once we're at growth con and there's 4,000 people physically there, any tickets that would have been available are going to be gone. Totally. So if you guys are interested in the, we legitimately have three Bahamas. This is different than the mastermind. I do this to tell her to let me finish. Oh, Um, did you guys see that? This is different. I saw subtle. I saw some notes coming across. This is different than the day after mastermind. Yeah. We have a whole little slide, a little. Yeah. So if you guys, Hey team, if you, and there's a video, play the video, play the video. I didn't know there's a video. It's sick. You're going to love it. I don't ever want to be average. I want to be the best at whatever I do because you're only going to live one life. You might as well put it all in and and exit. Were you ever given an opportunity to be around people that you know you could vet, that the mentors that you believe in would bring in people who mentored them? So you get the best of like, you get the beginning of the cycle and you get the end of the cycle and you get the middle of the cycle. That's the one thing I would have done different. I should have invested money early on in getting around people that had been there, people that had done it. You are like the people you spend your time around, right? It's amazing to have the people that know how to be successful. That's cool. I Isn't didn't know you guys video? put that together. Yeah, that's great. That was when he was kicking my ass playing backgammon. Yeah. So nothing's so, changed. So yeah, nothing's changed. So look, we have that, and we have the Bahamas Mastermind. Um, there, it's twenty-five thousand a seat. If you're interested, let the team know. I just want to make sure that our audience gets first crack at these things. Uh, before we show up at GrowthCon and shoot the QR code if it's something you're interested in. We did just have a couple seats open up for Bahamas. So shoot this QR code. If you're like, hey, we, we're on the East Coast, we'd rather go to the Bahamas, talk to the team and we'll see if any of those tickets are still available because they came up today. So, mm-hmm. hey, it's always good having a great 10X Owners Live with oh. all of you. We so appreciate you guys committing 
time to, to be with us on Tuesday evenings. Love this community. Cannot wait for GrowthCon. Thank you for being the re most remarkable co-host. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. She, she's my own personal Vanna White. Pretty much. So, so I, I add a little more value than Vanna does. Vanna, like that's true. You actually run everything. Yeah, listen, I just talk a lot. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> so, look. Thank you guys. Have a have a blessed night. I'm going to turn you over to the team. Anything we can do to help you get your virtual, get your masterminds, get to GrowthCon. Let's let's 10x this thing. Let's. We'll do see it. you guys next Tuesday night. Bye, guys. The whole purpose of this show is to engage with business owners and be able to answer questions for people that will give them some insight and perspective on how to grow and scale a business. Not only leadership, but real life examples. This is the golden moment. I would do business with you right now.